Dan, thank you for coming on. How are you? This is Dan from Mass of the Ages. I'm doing really well. Great to see you again, Father. It's good to see you too. Um, you've just released, well, I mean, I'm going to show, let's show the people the trailer and then you and I can talk about it live because Great. this is fantastic what you guys are doing. Let's have a look. I've been to Mass as long as I can remember, but yet it is the traditional Latin Mass that has changed our faith life. At former time, all churches in the world were singing the same voice, one church, one voice, one prayer. J'ai un fils prêtre. Notre attachement à la messe traditionnelle, elle est de toujours. Lui, c'était ça, sa vocation. C'était pas, c'était pas autre chose. Il n'aurait pas eu la vocation autrement. Pope Francis is cracking down. New guidelines today on the celebration of the traditional Latin Mass. A bombshell of a law titled Guardians of the Tradition claims to seek unity by limiting the old right. Si on ne lui donne pas de paroisse, c'est, c'est, c'est comme si, je ne sais pas moi, on ne vous donne plus de maison, plus de, plus de rien. Dizaines de mères de prêtres se sont mises en route ce dimanche à Paris, leur destination, Rome. Elles apportent avec elles près de 1500 lettres de catholiques, exprimant au Saint-Père leur désir de voir cette liturgie se maintenir. I don't know if Pope Francis has seen the fruit of traditional mass. Well, I'll pause it there. Fantastic trailer, fantastic film. I was fortunate enough to have a preview of this um, sometime last year. Very touching. Can you give us a rundown of the journey that, well, the the journey that these women were going on in the movie? Yeah, so uh, the traditional Latin mass in the Catholic Church has been heavily restricted by Pope Francis. And since then, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, a group of French mothers make this pilgrimage to Rome to try to meet with the Holy Father to hand deliver in the end 2000 3000 letters to the holy father to plea to him to reverse his decision on behalf of their sons but, but why is this important what's so special about the traditional latin mass traditional latin mass for many people has just been this anchor in history tradition giving them a connection to the faith of the past which really is the faith of all ages and all times for all ages and for all times and so we believe and and many others do too that this is a really important thing that must be preserved uh for millennia and one of the brothers said in the clip just there you know one prayer one voice that universality of not just everyone praying the same prayer together now but throughout history too that connection with the church militant and the church triumphant that we're all in the, I mean, that's the point of the mass, right? That we're, we're all partaking in this perpetual sacrifice of Christ to the Father. But is that not what the TLM is all about? Absolutely, it is. And um, indeed, the traditional Latin mass, obviously Latin um, is one of the key words there. So this pertains to the Latin church. It's not an exclusion of the Eastern churches or the, the other rites that have grown up alongside this. The una voces dicentes, which is Latin for one 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 voice and crying out, um, that is just in reference to the canon of the church that had previously remained unchanged for 1600 years. And so there was this understanding that no matter the what time in history or the locale that you are in, the church is praying with one voice and one prayer, this canon that was passed down to the apostles from Christ himself uh, through all the ages. And so traditionally, there have always been flavors of the mass. And you quite rightly pointed out that, that we're talking about the Latin church, the Western church, rather than the Eastern church. And this is the tradition of the Western church. But I just want to point out that that's broadly the church, not just even the Roman Catholic church. We're talking about you know, the church in England uh, for, for many centuries celebrated through what we call the Sarum Rite, which is uh, a precursor to the traditional Latin mass, which then got developed into what is now 
um, what the Anglicans would refer to as the Book of Common Prayer. And um, so there has always been that connection, regardless of where you are in the West, which church you're a part of, that there was a universality at, at one point when we were all part of the one church before the Reformation, before the Great Schism. So it's a connection that goes all the way back for all Christians. And that's important too, isn't it? It's absolutely important. And um, we just hope that all Christians around the world, in fact, we get many comments on our YouTube channels from Christians, atheists, Catholics, many people that say, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're not, we're not Latin Catholics or we're not even Christian. I don't even believe in God, but I see what you're trying to do is preserve something. And I see that that in of itself is good, preserving that sense of connection to our forefathers and to the truth. I mean, if truth is truth, right, it doesn't matter what time or age you're in. Um, it transcends time and age. Um, I think really importantly as well for us as a, you know, we're a filmmaking company. Um, we're actually a nonprofit, uh, but we're not just a filmmaking company. We've come out with three films. You can watch two of them on YouTube right now. Um, and the third one will come out on March 19th, which for us as Catholics is the feast of St. Joseph, the worker, who's a patron of ours. Um, but more importantly, what we want to do and what we want to set out to do is to bring back the traditional Latin mass. And we have some very definitive plans to do that. Okay, I'll get, I want to get to those plans in a moment, but also you mentioned there that this is true. You mentioned that it's good, and we've, we've previously discussed that it's beautiful. Why would any shepherd of the church want to suppress something that's true, beautiful, and good? Um, that's a great question. I think, uh, I mean, not to get too churchy, but in the 60s, there was a council in the Catholic Church, an ecumenical council, um, so it holds sort of a certain weight of authority and respect due to it by Catholics. And after that council, many thought that we should restrict the traditional mass. Um, they thought there was going to be a new spring time in the church if we could only modify the mass to make it fitting for modern man. So in the vernacular, that means their own language. And uh, with many possibilities for cultural adaption, many options baked into the liturgy so that the rubrics weren't so tight. And so I don't think they realize that by removing the traditional Latin mass from modern man's experience, they're actually removing the thing that modern man needs the most, which is a connection to something other and bigger than the time now and the culture now other than the zeitgeist that is before us, which, um, if we're being quite frank, really tends to modernism, despair, loneliness, and, and a lack of identity. And that's what the traditional mass offers. So I, I hope that bishops around the world, Catholic bishops uh, who uh, are under Rome and under the Holy Father, are able to kind of stick up and speak out to uh the Pope in a respectful way and to petition the church to uh, overturn some of these harsh and in many places, cruel decisions to restrict the traditional mass. Mm, it sounds from your description that Vatican II was a, a case of modernity or wokeness before woke was even a thing. This idea of making something more diverse, more inclusive and uh, providing other options. It's not to diminish the, the mass by comparing it to a, to a restaurant, but when you go to a restaurant, you have too many options. I think it's far better to go to a restaurant that has fewer options, but does something particularly well, focuses on one thing, doing it really well. I think that's what the, the mass did before all these options came on board. But um, you are obedient to your Pope. You do have um, a, a physical present leader of your, of your church. How do you square that with, with the suppression that's going on? And, and more importantly, has he seen your movie? We don't know if he's seen our films. Um, what we do know is that um, many cardinals have seen the films, many bishops have, uh, many people who have the ear of Pope Francis. And um, our second episode is pretty controversial because it unpacks what happened after Vatican II. I think there's a distinction there between Vatican II itself, which is an ecumenical council, and 
um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's not something that we have the liberty to kind of call heretical outright or teaching error outright. Um, however, after Vatican II, there was some interpretations of the council documents that were taken too far. Um, and that is something that can be criticized and should be criticized. Um, and in our second film that we explore that heavily, if the Pope saw it, I, I know that he's not going to like it. It, it. It's something that um, is fake. It's that hard dis discussion you have to have at the dinner table when your family's together at Christmas time and, and something gets brought up and you've got to air the laundry, as they say out here. And so we, we do hope that he sees this film because this film is more hopeful in nature. It's appeal an appeal to the noble sensibilities of bishops and even of the Holy Father himself to overturn this um, uh, horrible thing that's happened in the church. I think it's important work that you're doing. And I think it's a reminder that the Pope is the primus inter paris and that it's the responsibility of his fellow bishops to hold him to account and to challenge him in love and to say that what you're doing with the suppression of the traditional Latin mass is wrong. And they are the people that can do that respectfully and faithfully. So it's great that you're challenging your fellow, you're challenging your bishops in your church to stand up to the Bishop of Rome. I, I applaud you for that. Uh, you mentioned you've got plans going forward. What are your plans? Yes, we're more than just a trilogy. So our big plan is we're coming out with a priest training course. So this would be an online platform that allows them to learn the traditional Latin mass at their own pace. Um, seminaries around the world that offer the traditional Latin mass are great, but they re it requires a, a lot of commitment and a commitment to something that seems to be bad in the eyes of Rome. However, at your home, you can log on, you can watch these videos, you can learn from um, priests and take the course and take tests and we're going to be shipping out these traditional Latin masses in a box. So that contains everything that a priest needs to uh, have to, to say a mass um, uh, in their own time. And th this is completely crowdfunded. It's completely free for priests. Um, and, and we just hope that this will double Latin masses around the world. Here's a, here's a stat for you and your, and your listeners. Uh, there's one Latin mass for every 800,000 Catholics, Roman Catholics, one Latin mass for every 800,000 Catholics. There's 1,700 Catholic priests that celebrate the traditional Latin mass. That's 1,700. That's all. So we're going to double that number by 2032 uh, through our training program and through our apostolate. And this was not in reaction to the Holy Father. In fact, we came out with our organization, our nonprofit, and our films before Traditionis Custodis, the document that restricts land mass, was ever promulgated. So uh, we, we see it as fortuitous and, and a sign of providence that God wants this to happen. I love it. I've, I've looked at some of your, you've got some preview videos up of the priesthood training. I think it's fantastic. I'll be following those videos very closely as, as you release them. I thank you for all the hard work you do, not just in challenging Rome, but also in promoting the mass to people who may not know the traditional mass because they've only been brought up in, in the new rite. I think it's wonderful. So keep doing what you're doing. Where can people find your films? Yes, absolutely. You can find them on YouTube. Um, so just search mass of the ages or Go to latinmass.com where you'll find all of our resources and all of our films. Thank you. What, a, do what a domain name. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, thank you very much for coming on. God bless you. Have a good day. God bless. Thank you for watching my Common Sense Crusade. If you'd like to watch the whole show, you can subscribe to lotuseaters.com for as little as £5 per month, and then you get access to a bank of content as well. My show is 3 p.m. every Thursday. See you there. Day is fault.